Hi all. In this video, let's learn about how to handle errors in JavaScript. So before understanding how to handle errors in JavaScript, firstly, we need to understand what all the categories of errors we have. So there are three categories of errors we have. The first category is syntax error. So what does this syntax error mean? So we have missed the closing brace. So here, this is a syntactical error, it means this is a, not a valid JavaScript code. So the errors are, which are like this will come under the syntactical errors. Whereas coming to the runtime errors, so runtime errors means you clicked a button and if you want to call a function, a, a function, but that function is not exist and you're trying to call that function. So in that case, you won't be getting any of the syntactical errors because any everything would be fine. But at the runtime, you're trying to call a function which is not there. So that is known as a runtime errors. Whereas coming to the logical errors, so syntactical error, it would be fine. Uh, syntactically, it would be fine. And uh, runtime also, there won't be any errors. But logical errors are like the user or the programmer making some issues in the code like uh, loops or uh, if you want to add two numbers one would be in a string and one would be a number so it won't happen the concatenation will happen it won't be addition so these type of uh, errors are nothing but logical errors so these are the three major categories of errors fine so first of all we have understood what all the categories of errors we have so now let's try to understand what happens when an error occurs so usually if you're if you're in your application, if an error comes, what happens? The script dies immediately. So it stops the execution at that point and it throws the error in the console here. In this console, it will be throwing an error and it, the execution of the script will stop at that point. So this is what happens if any error occurs in the JavaScript. So now what we are, how we are going to handle these errors. So we are trying to do something more reasonable then instead of just stopping the execution of the script and throwing the error in the console, we are trying to do something more reasonable with the help of try and catch. So this is what we are going to do. So this is how we are going to handle our errors. So now let's learn how to handle the errors step by step. So as we discussed the try and the catch, these two are the main blocks to handle the errors. So we'll come to the finally block later. So the execution flow, first of all, we need to understand the execution flow. For example, what code we need to keep in the try. So if you feel the code which gets some errors, that type of code you need to keep in the try block. Following to the try block, immediately you need to keep a catch block. Fine, this is how the syntactically it looks. So coming to the execution part, if there is no error occurred in the try block, so everything went smooth so then catch block will be ignored this will be ignored so this is what here so it will execute each and every line till the try catch ends and as there is no error the catch block will not be executed so this is the happy case when there is no error so if you if there is any error so let's take that case here so if there is any error so the first line is executed and now we got an error here because this variable is not present, we got an error. Now what happens? At this point, the execution stops. Means the this second point, this line will not be executed. This will not be consoled because we got error here. This, as we got error here, it will be thrown to the catch block. The execution comes to this block. So here you can do something really more reasonable to the users saying that something went wrong message or please try later so that we can uh, also you can log these error message through an API and we can send that back to the developers so that we can check what is the reason for this error. So in this way, we can do a number of things. Whenever there is an error, th that will be thrown to this catch block. Here you can do something more reasonable instead of just stopping the execution of the script. So this is the error path of the try and catch. So if something happens at this line, this line will not be executed directly. It will come to the catch block. Okay, fine. So this is the basic understanding of the try and catch. So now understand. let's understand a few more points related to the try catch. The first important point is try catch only work for the runtime errors. It means if you have any syntactical errors, try catch will not be uh, looking into that. Also, if there is any logical errors also, it will not identify them. 
okay it will only work on the runtime errors okay in sense it will work on only valid code if there is any syntactical code it will it will ignore that okay it will only work on the runtime errors that's the first point and the second point is it works synchronously so try catch will work the synchronously for example if you keep a set time out so this is a scheduled code so in sense this function this callback function would be executed after one second okay if you keep some scheduled code like this what happens this will be ignored try catch won't work on this scheduled code this is because the execution has went away the execution was passed through this try block after that this function will be executed because this is a scheduled code so that's the reason try catch won't work on this type of scheduled code fine if you want to implement try catch in the scheduled code you need to write in this way you need to use a set timeout like this and inside this set timeout you need to use a try and catch it's not like if you keep try and catch above and if you use this scheduled code this will not the, uh, the try and catch won't catch this errors because the time this function executes the control will be out of this try and catch so that's the reason it can't handle this scheduled errors so the important point here you need to understand is the try catch only works for the synchronous code not uh, asynchronous and uh, for the scheduled code it will not work okay it works in a synchronous way so coming to the error object as on when if there is any error hackers what happens javascript will prepare an error object it will generate an error object with these details so the details are like name what is error name what is the message of that error and call stack all these three will be available in this error object as soon as any error occurs javascript will generate an error object and it keeps all these three information these three properties in this error object and it will throw to the catch block and that that error object is this so in this error object you you will be having error dot name you can use the error dot name or you can use error dot message or else you can also use error error dot stack so all these properties will be available in this error object so this is about that error object more, more about this error object so coming to the in the latest versions we no need to have it it is not mandatory that you need to use this error object if you don't want to handle the things with the error if you don't want the error details you can omit this you no need to write this flower base and error syntactically everyone used to be habituated by writing this so you no need to write this if you are not interested to handle or deal with the error details you can just ignore that this is also perfectly valid valid syntax so along with this try catch we have throw throw is a keyword where we can throw the errors manually not only apart from the script issues uh, the javascript will throw the errors if you want to throw an error manually so you can use this throw keyword throw and now you can use a primitive type you can keep one you can keep false you can keep any any value here after throw you can keep any primitive values as well string also you can use but it is good to use error object with the same properties what we have discussed like name message and stack so it's good to use that type of objects and you can throw your own errors so in uh, with the help of this throw keyword we have an uh, a facility or uh, an advantage of throwing the errors on our own if you feel some condition is wrong so in, at that point you can use this throw and you can throw that error so this is all about handling the errors like it is a manual way of handling our own errors this throw will be handling it, this is not like a javascript throw it is our manual throw we are throwing an x error here and the catch block will catch this error and we can handle this accordingly so coming to the final point try catch finally so finally is also one of uh, the block like this so we can use this finally block here like this so irrespective of the if, if there is an any error occurred if there is no error occurred also this finally block would be executed what type of code will be usually writing in this final block is the code which we want to close the resources if you have opened some input stream in the try block then those type of resources input stream or web socket all these type of resources you can close these resources in the finally block 
so that's the reason even if you get error or even if you not get error then this finally block would be executed even if you write the return statement explicit return also before returning here it will be executed the finally block and then only it would be returned back so these are some of the important points we need to understand while we are working with the handling with the errors in javascript hope you like the video thanks for watching please subscribe for more videos